Hi everyone, welcome to another informative video of Fitness Farm. In today's video, we are going to see 10 questions from pharmacology subject. These questions will be very helpful for those pharmacists who is preparing for the pharmacist competitive exam. So without taking much more time, let's start the class. The first question is, oily injection is preferably given by oily injection is given by preferably given by options are option a subcutaneous route option b intramuscular route option c intravenous route option d none of the above oily injection is preferably given by through which route we can give oily injection which route is preferred for giving oily injection in the question it's mentioned oily injection okay so the correct answer for this question is option b that is intramuscular route intramuscular route is the preferred route of administration of oily injection here in this chart in the left side you can see the different particulars we will see each one the first one is drug injected to drug injected to in case of esc that is subcutaneous tissue drug injected to subcutaneous tissue in case of im that is intramuscular route the drug is injected to skeletal muscle okay in case of im the drug is injected to skeletal muscle in case of iv the drug is directly injected to veins veins in this question, the first question we seen here it is the last particular that is type of medicament. Which type of medicament is administering? In case of SC, we are administering aqueous suspension. Aqueous suspension. We can administer only aqueous suspension. In case of intramuscular route, we can administer oily solution as well as aqueous suspension. Okay. In case of I am we can administer oily solution as well as aqueous suspension. The last one that is IV that is intravenous route we can administer only aqueous solution. Okay, only aqueous solution, not that this is solution, not suspension. We can administer only aqueous solution. Okay. Now you understood why the answer is came intramuscular. Okay, oily injection we can administer through only I am pathway okay now we are going to the second particular that is nerves okay nerves in case of nerves subcutaneous tissue is richly supplied with nerves subcutaneous tissue is richly supplied with the nerves in case of intramuscular that is not that much richly supplied less richly supplied intravenous root is uh, not richly supplied okay so uh, nerves are present in abundant in case of a yes, subcutaneous tissue okay so because of the nerve supply we cannot administer irritant drug okay we cannot administer irritant drug in subcutaneous pathway okay subcutaneous root okay why because the subcutaneous root is richly supplied with the nerves that's why we cannot administer irritant drug through subcutaneous route. We can administer mild irritant drug through intramuscular since it is less richly supplied. Since there are no uh, supply of nerves or there is a very less supply of nerves in, in case of intravenous route we can administer highly irritant drug also so highly irritant drug can be injected through intravenous route hope you got this one now we are moving to the next point that is absorption of drug in case of subcutaneous tissue absorption will be slower slower but in case of im that will be better compared to subcutaneous tissue or subcutaneous route in case of intravenous the absorption is rapid that's why it has got 100 percentage of bioavailability IV route has 100 percentage of bioavailability 
volume of injection volume of injection we can inject only very small volume that is almost a maximum of 1 ml okay in case of uh, subcutaneous tissue or subcutaneous root of injection we can administer only very small amount or very small volume of injection in case of im we can go up to 10 ml 10 ml up to 10 ml even though it's saying up to 10 ml we are not administering normally up to 10 ml we are administering normally 3 3 ml like that okay we are administering normally 3 ml like that next one is intravenous route we know that through intravenous route we can administer large volume of injection that we know that uh, ringer lactate or uh, dextrose 5 percentage are administering through IV route they are almost 500 ml so large volume of injection can be administered through IV route so self injection what about self injection in case of subcutaneous injection we can the self injection is possible self injection is possible subcutaneous injection example is insulin okay insulin is one of the example so insulin is normally the patient is doing himself so self injection is possible in case of subcutaneous injection but in case of im that is not that much practicable or it, we can say that it is impracticable and in case of IV it is not possible okay hope you got this all the points one more time I will repeat drug is injected directly into the subcutaneous tissue in case of subcutaneous injection in case of IM that is skeletal muscle in case of IV the drug is injected into vein nerves when we are comparing the nerves it is richly supplied subcutaneous is richly su supplied that's why we cannot administer a uh, irritant drug, irritant drug we cannot administer in case of subcutaneous uh, ingestion. The absorption of drug is uh, fast in case of intravenous. Intravenous, we can uh, uh, the absorption of drug is very fast, and uh, the volume of injection, large volume we can administer in IV, and the self injection is possible in case of subcutaneous. And type of medicament, aqueous suspensions are administering in the subcutaneous oily solution and aqueous suspension can be administered in the IM and aqueous solutions only solutions only can administer in the IV route now we are going to the second question question is broad spectrum penicillin include which of the following is broad spectrum penicillin or extended spectrum penicillin Options are methicillin, option B ampicillin, option C cloxacillin, option D none of this. Methicillin, ampicillin, cloxacillin, none of this. The correct answer is option B that is ampicillin. Ampicillin is a broad spectrum penicillin. Now we will see different classification, I mean uh, the classification of semi-synthetic penicillin. Penicillins are classified into first one acid resistant penicillin. Okay, this is acid resistant penicillin. Why it is acid resistant penicillin? Penicillin G is normally it is acid labile or we can say acid gastric acid can destroy the penicillin G. That's why penicillin G is given through parenterally. It cannot be given through orally. Okay, why? Because gastric acid can destroy the penicillin so here it is the first one acid resistant alternative to penicillin G so which is the acid resistant penicillin G it is penicillin V penicillin V penicillin V is uh, given through orally it, it cannot be uh, destroyed by gastric acid Next one is penicillinase resistant penicillin. Examples are methicillin, cloxacillin, then dicloxacillin. Okay, methicillin, cloxacillin, dicloxacillin are penicillinase resistant penicillin. Next class is extended spectrum or broad spectrum penicillins. 
First one is amino penicillin, then carboxy penicillin, then urido penicillin. In case of amino penicillin, the examples are ampicillin, that is the answer for that question, becampicillin, then amoxicillin, okay, extended spectrum or broad spectrum. First one is amino penicillin, examples are ampicillin, becampicillin, amoxicillin. Second one is carboxy penicillin, carbonicillin, then ticarcillin. Urido penicillin example is piperacillin and mesidocillin. These are the example for extended spectrum penicillin. Okay, so penicillins are classified into acid resistant penicillin, then penicillinase resistant penicillin, then extended spectrum penicillins. Okay, now the third question. Question is sulfonamides are generally metabolized by Sulfonamides are generally metabolized by options are acetylation, option B, microsomal oxidation, option C, N methylation, option D, conjugation. The correct answer is option A that is acetylation. Sulfonamides are generally metabolized by acetylation. Here, when you are thinking about sulfonamides in your mind, the term rash A B C should come. Okay, rash A B C. Sulfonamides is rash A B C. What sulfonamides can produce rashes? That is the R of rash A B C. It can produce or it has adverse effect of rashes. It can produce rashes. It is Metabolized by acetylation, okay, this is also important, that was the question, acetylation, then yes, it represents Stephen Johnson syndrome, okay, sulfonamides can cause Stephen Johnson syndrome, that is a adverse effect of the sulfonamide, then it can cause hemolysis in G6PD deficiency cases, okay, G6PD deficiency cases, it can cause hemolysis, that is H. Then A, B, C, it can cause aplastic anemia. Then it can cause Kernic terrace in neonates. Okay, Kernic terrace in neonates. That is the bilirubin replacement. Okay, it is occurs due to bilirubin replacement. That's called Kernic terrace in neonates. Then it can cause crystalluria. This is also important. Okay, crystalluria, bilirubin replacement. All are important points regarding the sulfonamides. So what are the sulfonamides? Sulfonamides, yeah, what are the adverse effects? One is rashes, then Stephen Johnson syndrome, then hemolysis, uh, then aplastic anemia, then curlicterus or bilirubin replacement and crystalluria. These are the adverse effects and it is metabolized by acetylation process. Okay, acetylation process. Now we are moving to the next question, question number four. Perinome is a common brand name for. Perinome is a common brand name for. Options are mascarine, option B, domperidone, option C, pilocarpin, option D, metoclopramide. Perinome is a common brand name for. Op correct answer is option D, that is metoclopramide. Okay, metoclopramide is the correct answer. Perinome. Domberidone is motilium. Okay, domberidone is motilium. Motilium. Okay, now we are going to the next question, question number five. Secondary hypertension may occur due to. Secondary hypertension may occur due to. What is secondary hypertension? Secondary hypertensions are the hypertension which is due to renal or vascular and endocrine diseases okay it is due to the hypertension due to some diseases okay so what is primary hypertension or essential hypertension that is the normal hypertension or normal bp we are seeing okay primary hypertension may develop as a result of uh, environmental factor or genetic factors okay that is the primary or essential hypertension. Secondary hypertension is due to some diseases. Okay. Uh, options are secondary hypertension may occur due to options are option A construction, uh, construction of blood vessel, option B atherosclerosis, option C increase in calcium level, option D none of the above. Secondary hypertension may occur due to. The correct answer for this question is option B that is atherosclerosis. Atherosclerosis can cause 
secondary hypertension okay now we are moving to the next question question number 6 paracetamol is excreted as paracetamol is excreted as paracetamol option a glucuronide option b d acetylated product option c hydroxy derivative option d none of the above so paracetamol is excreted as we studied it paracetamol is metabolized by glucuronide conjugation so it is excreted as option a that is glucuronide okay uh, actually uh, paracetamol is metabolized in the liver and it is excreted in urine okay mainly as glucuronide and sulfate conjugate okay uh, next question question number seven the volume of injection should not exceed 10 ml this one we already discussed okay it should not exceed 10 ml okay options are intravenous option b intramuscular option c both a and b option d none of the above we studied in case of intravenous we can administer large volume of uh, uh, medicament in case of intramuscular the maximum amount is maximum volume of uh, uh, drug is maximum 10 ml so normally we are giving 3 ml like that but uh, in case of intramuscular maximum 10 ml and the, the correct answer is option B. Okay. Now we are going to the next question. Question number nine. Gray baby syndrome is associated with hope. All knows this answer. This is very important. Gray baby syndrome is associated with options are chloramphenicol, option B erythromycin, option C penicillin, option D rifampicin. Gray baby syndrome is the side effect of option A chloramphenicol. Chloramphenicol is the correct answer. Now we are going to the next question that is question number 9 oral contraceptives contain oral contraceptives contain option A estrogen option B anti progestin option C estrogen and progesterone option D none of the above oral contraceptives contain oral contraceptive contain the correct answer is option C that is estrogen and progesterone in some oral contraceptives uh, it may contain only progesterone also okay but there are no option of that one so maybe it may contain estrogen and progesterone otherwise it will contain only progesterone okay so what is anti-progestin anti-progestin is mifepristone anti-progestin is mifepristone mifepristone okay it is used for the termination of pregnancy anti-progestin now we are moving to the next question, last question of this video. Clofibrate mainly lowers the clofibrate. Clofibrate we studied in hypolipidemic drug. Okay, it is a class of hypolipidemic drug. Clofibrate mainly lowers the options are LDL option B, chylomicrons option C, VLDL option D, HDL. Okay, LDL, chylomicrons, VLDL, HDL. Clofibrate. We studied clofibrate in the fibric acid derivative class of hypolipidemic drug. Clofibrate is a fibric acid derivative. It can activate lipoprotein lipase. Fibric acid derivative can activate lipoprotein lipase. The examples are clofibrate is one of the examples, then gemfibrosil, then bezafibrate, then phenofibrate. These are the examples for uh, uh, fibric acid derivative or uh, which uh, hypolipidemic which activates lipoprotein lipase. What is the role of lipoprotein lipase enzyme? Lipoprotein lipase is an enzyme in the degradation of VLDL resulting in the lowering of triglycerides. So the answer is clofibrate mainly lowers the VLDL. How it lowers the VLDL? Because clofibrate coming under a lipoprotein lipase activator so it will activate lipoprotein lipase enzyme this lipoprotein lipase uh, activation may lead to the degradation of VLDL and resulting in the lower lowering of VLDL in the blood okay thank you guys for watching this video hope you understood all the question if you have any query regarding these questions you can ask in the comment section thank you for watching this video